So finally tying this back to uh, the color tag where you can put in a six digit hexadecimal number and I'll sort of illustrate what that sort of amounts to. So first thing you wanna put in here is a little hash symbol and then the first two hexadecimal digits that come after that, that is in fact the red component. And since FF is the largest value you can have for a two digit hexadecimal value, that corresponds to a value of 255, which means the red lights, or the red subpixels will be at maximum intensity. And then here I just have two zeros, which would give me nothing, and this is the green component, and this gives me nothing in the green component. So the green subpixels will be completely off. They won't be emitting any light at all. And then the blue subpixel value is given by the last two digits. So red, green component, blue component. And since this is also zero, that's nothing from the blue component. So the blue subpixel will be completely dim. So everything is red. 255, that's the maximum. So it's red pixel is going to be maximum value. Green pixel, nothing. Blue pixel, nothing. So that's just going to be a pure red color. So if we want to go see what this looks like. You can see we're back to red here on our web page. And uh, as a general rule of thumb, the larger the values you put in for the individual components, the brighter the color that you'll get. So let's say I put in something like 77, which is uh, about halfway, roughly, not quite, but halfway between 0 and 255. It's not quite, but it's a very rough approximation. The actual halfway point would be 80. But uh, you'll notice that it's still a red shade but it's considerably darker. And that's just a general rule of thumb. The higher the values you put in here, the brighter the colors you're gonna get. The lower values will give you uh, dimmer colors. And if you don't have any light in here at all, that's just simply black. There's no red light, there's no green light, there's no blue light, so that's just simply a black color, as you can see right here. And some other things that you can sort of keep in mind, if you put in the same value for red, green, and blue, that'll just simply give you a shade of gray. So I'll say something like, this combination right here. And this will be somewhat of a bright shade of gray. You can see it may be hard to see on the screen here, but it is in fact there, you can see it is a shade of gray. And then if you sort of think about uh, mixing up different combinations of red and blue at maximum intensity, uh, this would be the highest value for red, this would be the highest value for blue, nothing for green, that corresponds to a color known as magenta, which kind of looks like a bright pink. And then maximum red, maximum green, and no blue, that gives me a yellow color, which might be hard to see on the screen, so I'll go ahead and highlight it. You can see it is, in fact, a yellow color. And then another uh, sort of elementary combination of the two is all the green and blue at maximum intensity and no red light, which gives us a color called cyan, which is also really bright and might be kind of hard to see on the screen here. And another sort of combination that might be worth introducing is something like this. So uh, a value of red uh, that's at, you have a value of red and a value of green that's about half the value of the red component that'll give you sort of an orange color, something like that. And then if you have, say, a combination like this where you have a red value and then uh, I'll say two third. the green value is two-thirds what the red value is, and the blue value is one-third what the red value is. That'll give you something that looks sort of brown. It'll give you sort of a brown or beige color, depending on how, uh, how bright you make it. So if you make this really dim, if you sort of bring this down to a much... You keep the same ratio, but if you make it much darker, it'll look more brown. And you can see it looks kind of brown there. So you can sort of play around with the different combinations to see what color kind of colors you can get. But if you want to get any color at all, this would be how you would accomplish it. You would just put in different combinations of red, green, and blue to get any color that you want. And the best way to sort of get a feel for this is just to play around with it. But uh, there are also some applications that uh, you can sort of pick out a color on a color wheel. Like in Microsoft Paint, there's an option to do that. And uh, on certain Mac applications, there's also a way to do that. Uh, Keynote is one way to do that. Uh, there's a slideshow presentation app on the on the Mac called Keynote, and you can play around with different red, green, and blue triplets, and it'll tell you what the individual red, green, and blue values are. But uh, yeah, if you're looking to get any color at all, if you're looking to get a very specific color, a very specific shade of a color, then the best way to do that is just uh, a red, green, and blue triplet. And remember, this is in hexadecimal. This is not in base 10, even though it may look like base 10, but it is, in fact, still hexadecimal. And if I put in 
uh, everything that is the red, green, and blue are all at maximum intensity. That in fact gives me a white color. And if you put that on a white background, it looks like nothing's there. But if you highlight it, you can see the text is in fact white. So that's sort of a first look at uh, some of the stuff you can do with colors. So I'll go ahead and put this back to uh, shade of red, kind of what we had earlier. And another thing that you can do with colors is you can highlight the background of text. So I'll go ahead and demonstrate something like that, just to create some extra spacing in the page. And the way you accomplish this is to use what's referred to as a span tag. And there's an attribute within the span tag called style. And within the quotation marks, you'll write out background hyphen color, all lowercase, and then same format as before, you give it an RGB triplet, a red, green, and blue triplet. Remember, this is the red component, green component, blue component. Also a good idea to make sure that semicolon is there, and all that should be contained in quotes. And then whatever you put within the span tag, that will in fact be highlighted by this color right here. And if we want to see what that looks like, you can see this text is in fact highlighted yellow. And remember, maximum value of red and green will give you a shade of bright yellow. And the last thing to go ahead and demonstrate while we're on the subject of colors is how to get the how to change the background color of a web page. And this actually is going to go be something that goes outside of the body and head tags. And this is use this uses something called the style tag. And really this is sort of a first look at something called a cascading style sheet or CSS. Uh, I'm not going to go into a great depth of what that is, but if you check out the W3 Schools resource, which was uh, a link included on the first on the first video, then you can sort of get an idea of how exactly CSS works in much greater depth than what I'm about to show. But the way you pull this off is you can just simply put the text on the screen that I'm putting on here. So make sure you have the style tag, and within the style tag, HTML, a set of braces, and here background color and here you can actually set the background color of your web page. So since I have all the red, green, and blue values set to zero, this will in fact give me a black background on my web page. You can see the result there. And again you can play around with this to get some sort of colors. So if I want say a bright gray background then I could do something like that. You can see it's not perfectly white, it is slightly dimmed, but it is in fact a bright shade of gray. So I think that's going to do it for this segment. If you're really interested in learning more about how exactly the subpixels and everything on your computer works, I'll put a link to a neat little video in the description below that is uh, something I stumbled upon pretty recently. I thought it was just the coolest thing ever. So if you're really curious to look at how exactly your computer screen and your television screen work, there's a neat little video that I'll put a link to in the description below. But uh, other than that, I think uh, that will do it for this segment, and I'll see you guys in the next segment.